are you doing? Welcome to live stream number 79. Today is Wednesday and it is the 18th of October 2017. If you're watching this, you're watching the recording. Quite haven't gotten anybody in the live stream just yet. They'll be there in just a second. Thank you so much for uh, for taking the time to, uh, to watch this. Really appreciate it. Don't forget, down in the description area of this video, you will find my email address. Any future topics you would like to see, email me. Thank you so much. All right. Tommy is here. Then we can get going. So um, let's talk about what's new in Fusion 360 for this October. Uh, because Fusion actually released two updates. You should have gotten, uh, you should have gotten one uh, yesterday. Uh, and then one last week, the 10th. So eight days ago. Isaac is here, DJ is here, Lucas is here. Thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, yeah, let's go in and look at those quick. So, um, if I switch over, uh, called up the blog here that Kiching is uh, author of. He does a great job with this. Um, and this was October 10th. Um, and what they what they did in that update was really fixing fixing things. So I, that was why I really didn't do anything live stream about it. Um, um, not that fixing is not important. It's extremely important. And they kind of like went down uh, the same path um, with yesterday's update and did uh, a bunch of, uh, of different um, fixes and updates in here. By the way, if you ever want to, uh, to see um, these what is new? You you should get notified on the screen, um, right on top with a green bar. It should say, "Hey, we updated," and see what's new. But sometimes I know you're busy and you just exit out, and then you're like, maybe a couple of days later, it's like, "What was it again?" Inside of Fusion, you might not already know that. Uh, inside of Fusion, if you go up here, there's a question mark that that says "Help," but it's not just for help. <laughs> it's also for good information. If you click on that. Right down here, there is a link out to uh, the What's New, and that will bring you. Well, let's load another window of the same um, same one I have here. Um, so a bunch of uh, kind of fixes and things like that. Um, they did some with, well, um, some different things uh, inside of scheduling, uh, sketching, modeling, two D drawing, usability. If you're using a three D connection device like like I do, uh, there was some one of these things. There was an issue uh, with with those with the zooming in. I don't really. I'm not a programmer. <laughs> um, the closest I've ever gotten to program anything have been like post modifications for Cam. And all I know is that you change one thing and then that affects other things, and it can be a little bit of a hassle to figure out. Um, so that's why they kind of like go in here and kind of like get these things straightened out. One thing I do want to make sure that you are aware of, if you are a Mac user, um, they they do announce that they will uh, will only be supporting 10.11 or 10.11 and not 10.10. .10. Uh, I don't really know why, but uh, but that's um, I think I guess that's something I want to. I want to bring to your attention with with these fixes. Now, there's two things that was new that I want to show you. But before I get to that, um, also be aware of that there's a roadmap. Now, where I'm talking about what is inside of the software here. So I clicked up on the help, and you got the what's new. Be also aware that there is a pro a product roadmap you can go out and uh, and look at, and uh, that's kind of neat actually. Uh, they have kind of like. Uh, and updates where they show you this is from the spring, but kind of like show you where where they're headed and what they are kind of like trying to uh, to fulfill. I gotta ping Kiching and see um, when they're planning on coming out with a new one. Um, but um, you know, it's just good to know that that you can get this uh, information about where they're kind of like are headed. And I will also say before I get into the two things I want to show you that is new is um, you know. So we at Autodesk, I mean, whenever they make updates, uh, of course, there is done a bunch of testing internally on these different updates. But nothing, uh, no better test than than when you guys send it through 
you know, all the different angles that that function could be sent at. And then, like I said, many times it affects things in the background. So I definitely personally want to thank you, all of you guys who is providing feedback on, on things inside the software. We definitely appreciate that a ton. All right, two updates that uh, we should touch on. One of them was kind of um, kind of close to what we were talking about yesterday. So yesterday we did uh, this uh, cup here. I don't know if you saw yesterday's live stream, but um, one of the things we did almost at the end was that we uh, that we combined um, the handle with the cup. Well, funny enough, in the new release on the cloud, remember that Fusion now runs in a browser in preview mode. Um, we have now added the combine. Let me show you that. Um, so I'm gonna jump into the, I loaded it up because I have learned that with, uh, when I'm doing these live streams, my band will start struggling when I'm, when I'm kind of like sending data back and forth, back and forth. So I loaded up in the browser here. So here you will see uh, our cup. Now <clears throat> this isn't a browser, so you don't have to have Fusion installed. It is in preview. It's only the modeling environment right now. Um, they don't have the other yet, but I mean, they're kind of coming. And this is, like I said, this is preview mode, kind of beta. Um, but the way you get here, if you want to know how to get here, in the easiest way that I get to it is inside of Fusion, go to your data panel, go out to your name, like your default directory. And if you click on this link, it will open up out on the web, right? And uh, this is kind of like your, uh, you can access your, from any browser, your projects here. And when you do that, then all you have to do to open up a file, let's go to this live stream one that we've been playing around with. Um, all you have to do to open it up in a browser, so this means you could do this on somebody who don't have Fusion uh, installed, is that when you go down and you click on this little arrow over here, it will now suggest if you want to open it on the desktop, what is the Fusion install installment you normally are using, or if you want to edit it in a browser and you click on this, then um, it will open up here. And like I said, I just pre-did it because my data is not always that strong, I found. Um, so uh, what they added, so you will see we have a feature tree down here uh, I, I deleted those last three operations. So we have the, the body of the cup and the body of the handle here um, in the browser. And just like we did yesterday, you can now go into the modify dropdown and you will now see that that combine was added in here. You click on that and it works just like it does in the desktop version. Click on the cup and uh, your tool body is the um, this one here. and uh, you hit OK, and now that have been combined, and then you can go in, and just like we did yesterday, you can go in and add uh, the fill that's in here, if that is what you, uh, the next thing that you kind of want to do, and all works just like as if you were in the desktop version. Uh, why do you why do you need this? Well, I think it's a little bit, you know, um, the, the Fusion you're running on your desktop is, you know, um, it's not really big data, heavy, but just the fact that our technology is to the point where we can actually work right in a browser, uh, that means that now you can literally work uh, everywhere. So happy that the, the development team added uh, some of these functions in there. If you haven't played around in the browser, um, I think you should go out and take it for a spin, just see like what is in here. Now you will notice that certain things, like I said, it's only uh, the model environment right now. You can't do cam or anything yet. Uh, and you also will see that, I don't even think, you know, you can't right click up here and go in in perspective. You're kind of like locked down uh, to uh, to just be in, in the author graphics. But cool they added that. The other thing that is, <laughs> I think many people would say is huge. Let me go back to the, to the desktop version here. And that is that from a cam standpoint, let me open up a new file. Uh, cam standpoint, if you go into cam and you in cam here, if you go under manage, there is now uh, form tools that have been added. So this is something that I know a lot of us who are doing cam uh, really 
uh, excites us um, when it comes to special cutters. So previously, if you go into Fusion 360, uh, you will see that there's all different kinds of, uh, of, of sample cutters in here. Um, well, actually, probably better to go up and look at type here. So there's ball end mills, bull nose end mills, all the the, um, the cutters that you you kind of imagine. But one that was missing missing was one way for you to actually create your own cutters. So uh, I thought that we would do that here, so I can kind of like take you through um, how you do that, and then I want to show you how I used to do this all the time when I was in the shop floor, um, and and how I kind of like not just did it for cutters, but actually for the whole holder and head and everything. So, go out in your model environment and model up your cutter. Now, the way you do it um, inside uh, here is that you kind of like just drawing the half of the cutter, the profile of the cutter. So, I'm going to open a new sketch and I'm going to start a sketch here on the front plane here. And uh, I think I'm in metric. I think that's the new standard. Uh, so go ahead and draw up kind of like the half of the cutter here. So if I just, I, and I normally recommend you just draw something up close to what you kind of want and then tie it down uh, with relationships and dimensions afterwards, right? So this line is a little crooked. So I'm just going to go up here and make that vertical. Um, and I think maybe I'm good with this. Let's add some dimensions to this. So remember, you're only doing half the profile of the cutter here. So all your dimensions are going to be half of what you maybe originally was thinking. So let's make this one two and a half. Let's make this one maybe eight millimeters. Um, let's strike this one in a little bit so we get kind of like a little bit of a taper on there. Maybe add an angle. Hit D for dimension. If I select the angled line and the straight line, I get and the straight line, I get a dimension here. So maybe we make it five degrees. I definitely recommend that you uh, fully define your sketches when you when you do this. Let's make 35, and then the total height of this cutter here, maybe it's 75. Okay, fully defined. So this is all you need uh, to create. Your, your custom cutter, really just kind of like the profile. Now, if you want to get a view of it, um, all you really have to do is going into your uh, create dropdown and you can revolve it. So hit revolve, click the, the area here as your profile, click the axis um, that is gonna revolve around and you now kind of like have the profile of that cutter right there. Uh, like I said, you don't have to profile it, um, but it just makes it um, a little bit easier maybe to see right here. Let me just, it doesn't matter. I can delete it again. Um, now, one thing that I would recommend you are doing is that when you have done this, you could actually right click on the sketch over here and say show dimension. That might be nice so it stays on there. But what I would do with this, before you go ahead and make your, your, your tool, um, go into one of your projects, create a specific folder by clicking up here and say new folder and, and name it something where you're saving these profiles. So if you ever come back to edit them later on, uh, then you, uh, you, can, you can do that. So just hit uh, in here and you can, you can save uh, it in here. All right, let's go and create a tool out of this profile. So, um, Go back into the cam environment. That's where you're going to specify it. And I'm just going to hide the data panel. And um, under here, on, you have the tool library right here. Here's this form mill. Now, this is important. And when you click on that, you get this dialog box. And this is so, you know, this just came out of the oven <laughs> from the developers. So uh, just be aware of that, you know, we haven't really gotten any help in here yet or stuff like that. But here's it goes. It goes with... with four different things you need to know. First is looking for the tool profile. So that is really just that boundary there. I click on that and that shows up. Um, I should probably also say, make sure that you put your rotation point around the origin. That's, I think that's a good rule. I haven't really tested it, but I would say go ahead and do that uh, unless you can't. Um, 
tool axis is what is kind of like the same as our revolving axis. So when you click on that, I'm going to select this line, the center line right here. That's what the tool is going to revolve around. Then there's something called compensation point. And what it means by that, if you don't select something, it's going to become the biggest diameter of your cutter. So in this case, this is going to be a 16 millimeter, right? Um, but you pr maybe don't want that to be your the specific diameter when you offset from the line. Um, so if I go ahead here and click on that, and, and I might select this line here at this point here. So now it's going to be the five millimeters that is actually going to be the diameter. And then the last option is flip the axis. And you actually really can't see this till you're going to look at the library. I normally draw on the front plane. And, and the reason I honestly is doing this is just because um, back in the day, CAD kind of like, there's no rules for this, but CAD companies kind of decided that front or is their origin um, and not top. I don't know why. So that's why I always do it here. But I know that I got to flip it here. If you don't check it, you will see it when you create your tool or you hit OK. So I'm going to hit OK. Nothing happens. That's OK. Go up to your tool library. And now if I scroll up to the top under this unlimited, that's the folder that I'm doing right now, there you will see your cutter. When you click on it, you should see this profile here. And of course, that's just, if that was upside down, that meant you should have flipped that checkbox with a flip axis the other way around. You will also see that there's a little red X that shows you where that compensation point is located. So right on that edge, so that's important. Now, what I recommend you do is that you create your own tool libraries over here. Now I have the cloud turned on uh, in the settings and I've covered that in, in other live streams. You can go into the settings, you can turn on your cloud libraries. You can also, if you don't have those on, you have a local LiDAR buried down at the bottom. What I recommend you do is you right click on uh, one of those and you say you're gonna create a new uh, tool library in there uh, and now because I have local on, let's go up to this one. Right clicking, you can say create a new tool library and you can rename that your custom tool because what you're then gonna do is you're gonna go up to unlimited where your new cutter is, drag it into your custom tool library. So now it resides in there because this unlimited uh, it's just that file we just drew all this up in. We want it actually in a library. I hope that this makes sense. Now, when we have it in here now, we actually have a bunch of different options we can do with it. You can now right click on it, go in and say edit tool. And you can do all the things that uh, you have done before. Like you can go in and say, you know, it's a carbide cutter. Do we want cool and through or not cool and through? How many flutes are on the thing? Give it a description. Right and call it something with your, uh, you know, that this is a custom cutter from this and this vendor. You can even add holders in here. Um, so if you select a holder in here, um, I don't know, Mari tool holders are kind of cool. I don't know what tool holders they have in here. They have all kinds of different styles in here. I don't know about the sides right now, but if I hit OK to that, uh, you will see we get a tool holder on top. It's because a little bit out of proportion. But um, another thing I just noticed when I did this yesterday, and maybe you have discovered this and I hadn't, you can now uh, delete tool holders. You didn't, if you had installed a tool holder in the past, you couldn't get rid of it again. I don't know when the development team added that, but that was news to me uh, when I looked at this. <laughs> so now you can actually remove tool holders. So if you didn't, if you have been thinking, man, uh, I never saw the update, but maybe I just missed it. All right. So this is how you define the tool. Now let's go in and look at it. So let's get out of the tool library. Let me open up a new file and let's just um, sketch something up here. Do 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 because that's this is what matters. Uh, let's put some dimensions on this. Something like that. Q extruded up. Something like that. And actually, maybe maybe we want to... Uh, no, let me do this. So uh, this is just 
I don't have isometric perspective on. There we go. Um, so let's just do a flat box here. So if I go into cam and do um, a setup, okay. And oh, and by the way, right now with this form tools, this is another important information. Uh, right now, it only works, I believe, with contour and trace. So I know that the development teams are working hard on getting these, you know, other functions in there. But right now, it, just those two, it supports. So I'm going to select a contour. I'm going to go up and select our new tool up here. Hit OK. And you will now see that it does show up on the screen here. And um, if I just select uh, this parameter and hit OK, uh, you will see that when I, uh, when I run this, that it's using that inner section as its compensation point, just like you, uh, like you, you hoped that it would. Now, I just selected the top edge here. Uh, let's go back into the model environment and uh, we could add something like a draft on the edge here, right? So we could add some kind of a draft to, uh, oh, I'm, not, I'm gonna select the bottom and uh, just select maybe these faces here. And uh, can we use the wheel? I thought we did it at five degrees, right? That would probably be the, be the right thing to do. So now there's five degrees on here and um, now, if I go in, because I wanted to do this, because I wanted to show a couple of things, um, if you didn't know. So right now, of course, it needs to update. So right now, it's 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 actually um, still running along the top edge. Uh, what means that we have a problem that if I if I that is the driving edge, um, it will not know. Um, where, um, what am I trying to say? It will not wear the, the color. If we just brought it down, like in the heights tab, for example, minus, um, I don't know, 10 millimeters. I actually don't know if I'm in, I think I'm in inches in here. That's going to be terrible if we do 10 inches. So now it's down here. Now be aware of that if we go in and simulate this, then it will actually, you know, it will still drive that that depth from up here. So what you can do, and maybe you didn't know this, but you can actually drive sketches from right from in here. So if I go back to the modeling space, and I'm going to create an offset plane right from from here, and um, let's go minus ten with that. And if you didn't know this, if I go in and I could actually go in here and maybe do something like split uh, face. So if I go in and split this face with this plane here, just like that, let's hide the plane. Now we actually split the face. I could drive that edge in, in the cam. So let's go back in and edit that. And if I go now in here, instead of doing the chain all the way around the top, if I just select this edge here, then it will and go get the 10 millimeters out of the this out of the height tab then you should now see that we actually now are driving uh that specific depth that we want so i hope that now you can see here that the cutter is not interfering and it's right perfect on on the edge there so that's how you can use these and of course this will show up in um in your if you turn stock on um then it will show up there so this is a straight uh piece of stock so you just gonna look a little strange but um you will see in here that it does do it in taper so you get that resembles there now the last thing as before we, we end here is i wanted to show how i used to use um use these form mills because um, as some of you guys maybe know that I used to program a lot of like tombstone machining where you place parts on different sides. Um, so you have one type of part over here, you have another type of part over here, and, and you're kind of like trying to program the different, the different parts with that. 
So what I used to do was I used to draw up my, my spindle. So if I move this around here, uh, here's my cutter in gold. This black is, um, is showing up as my holder. And then the red is my spindle on the, on the horizontal mill. Um, so, and again, I'm just like I was before. I just kind of like drew the whole thing up as a, as a sketch. And then with that in there, drawn up, if I go in and create a tool uh, for this, then when I go in and program in here, I can actually see the whole assembly of the tool, the tool holder, and the spindle. Now I can't remember if I actually, let me just see here. I did, I did put it, I couldn't remember if I put it in the tool library. So it is in here, I drew, brought in just like we saw the other one. So now if I go in here and say, all right, let's do a contour operation, like that was what we could, what we can use. And I'm going to go in and make sure that I select that tool custom made tool holder that has this tool, tool holder and spindle. And I go over to the contour page. And uh, if you're doing something like four axis positioning, like I will do here, then we are actually using the tool orientation to set our X, Y and Z, just so you know, uh, we talked about that in some live streams. So that shows the right way. And then I'm just going to machine this edge here. Now, this is what I want you to see. When I go in and simulate this, I actually get the whole spindle of the machine, the tool holder and the tool showing up. And then I can actually get an idea about if I will be hitting. And it surely looks like I will be hitting with the head here uh, as I'm going and simulating. So this is where I used to use form tools a lot. Now I've also used it just to make a cutter, but the fact that you can actually model up your entire spindle and holder and everything, um, that is, uh, is absolutely super, super useful. So that was what I was planning on showing today. I hope this was somewhat useful. Uh, definitely worth testing out if you have not already. Uh, fusion in the browser go and play around with that a little bit and um, and then if you're a cam person uh, then I think this form tools was one of those things that you're like yes that was that was absolutely uh, what we needed and then of course um, you know again uh, all the, the the straightened out of, of different things um, with all the add-ons that, that the development team adds through uh, through the whole year Hope well, that was cool tomorrow same time 2 p.m., we are going to talk about how uh, to do uh, parting lines on a more complex plastic shape for a plastic injection mold. So we're going to get into some surfacing tomorrow. Um, so I hope that uh, I see you for that. I'm going to do what I normally do. I am going to end the broadcast. So if you're watching the recording, thank you so much. If you haven't already, please thumbs up, thumbs down, and hit that subscribe button. And then I'm going to jump into uh, the live stream and say hi to, uh, to all the awesome people in there. Thank you so much. Hope to see you tomorrow.